first week of my journey towards monetization here on YouTube, check. So in this video, I'll cover my different statistics, comments about how I feel about growing a YouTube channel. I started the channel in May of 2023, so it's been over a year now. People will tell you sometimes uh, to get monetized takes a few months, for some six months, for others one year. For me, it's been over a year. And you see my stats here, lifetime, 1,400 watch hours, over 600 subscribers. It's been a slower growth for me, but I have a full-time job. I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing this because I do research on the asset that I cover here in the channel. The channel is about crypto investing and also investing in disruptive assets. So it's part of the financial niche, investing, personal growth, learn how to invest by yourself. But the journey is already a year, over a year old. And I still have the willingness to continue making videos because investing is a passion of mine. Yes, it, it takes some time. I slow down maybe a little bit the amount of videos that I post. Again, I have a full-time job, so, and I have a few other YouTube channels, but I'm trying to manage this one. This is the biggest one, the one that I'm happiest with, the one I have enjoyed doing. So we'll go over the different stats of the YouTube channel, I haven't decided yet if it's going to be weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. We're going to start by weekly videos. I think many people like to know how everybody is doing. Not every type of channel grows at the same rate. Like you see mine, it's over a year old and I'm not monetized. was not necessarily the goal. The goal was to share my research, share my knowledge on the, these disruptive assets to as many people as I could. The people who want to learn, who want to get ahead of investing and personal growth also. So that was the goal. If I get eventually monetized, it's going to, to be a bonus, but it was not necessarily a goal of mine to be monetized by a certain date because you know I have to quit my job or something like that. It's not the case. I'm just doing it because I'm doing research on these assets anyway. Might as well share that with many people. And as you guys know, YouTube is a, is a search engine. So searching about disruptive assets fits in the role of selecting good assets to invest. So here I had a great opportunity to use that or exploit that YouTube search and Google search to share my knowledge, my experience, my passion about investing to as many people as I can. And as you see, I have 600 people in the world, mainly in the US, that follow my channel. So if I can impact one, two, ten people and share a little bit of information, help them avoid mistakes or huge mistakes, then that's a positive for me. That's good enough for me. So like I said, I had this channel for a while now and we'll go over the different aspects of the channel. I have stats, I made graphs, so you'll have a, an idea of what I'm tracking. Um, so let's start. If we go to the content page, I'm gonna show you quickly. I have 383 videos. That's quite a lot of videos. And you see here, these are the last ones that I've posted. Some have eight views, other 100 views, one here over 2000 views. But usually I'm around 100, 200 views per videos or something like that. Like I indicated, it's quite variable because there's a little different assets that I cover in the channel. I didn't focus on one specific asset or 
a small group of assets. I wanted to keep it large because uh, of the different interests that I have. The channel also covers assets to avoid also because it's not necessarily just um, good ones, but also avoid traps and things like that. So it within the crypto community, it applies to different people. Only some people follow one single asset, others multiple, others tons of assets. So I'm trying to play around here and see what people enjoy and take the comments from everybody and tweak the channel so that maybe I can reach a lot more people in the future. So before going into the statistics of uh, the channel, so let's look at the last seven days. What happened to the channel? I got 1,800 views out of the videos, 49% more than the last seven days, so that's good. 42.5 watch hours, 24% better than the previous week, and we got extra five subscribers that joined the channel. You see here 632 subscribers and 227 views in the last 48 hours. These are the latest videos and their performance. Sorry, these are the videos that performed well in the last week. So I got one over 1,000 views, second one over 100 views, and the other ones are 50 and below. So not all videos are going to perform very well. I'm trying to see which ones can um, generate views over multiple weeks. Some have, but there are very few, and they're actually specific. So I want to pinpoint on those and see what the interest is from the different subscribers. So in the last seven days, like I said, 1,300 views out of the videos, 64 views out of shorts. I have a bunch of shorts that I did a while back, a lot less now, so I'm not using as much shorts as maybe I, I should have. I'm focusing on uh, videos and watch time now to see how I can improve that. Returning viewers, 202 and shorts, 13. As shorts is more of a scroll type of uh, content, it's pretty normal that the returning viewers are lower. I got six subscribers from videos and one from shorts. In certain periods in the past, I have had more subscribers coming from shorts than videos, but usually it's videos over shorts. You see here, 94% of the views are coming from videos. I posted two videos in the last seven days. I'm gonna try now to have probably, yes, two, maybe even three videos per week on the channel to cover the main assets and not overwhelm the subscribers with multiple videos. There was a period where I was posting daily videos. It was very, very demanding in terms of time, editing and things like that, and research also. So I slowed that down to give also a lot more time for YouTube to show each video to different viewers. And I guess maybe broaden a little bit more my viewership instead of constantly being changing and putting more content on on the channel. As you see here, viewers, 85% are looking at my videos, 4% of people are, are looking at both, and 11% are looking at the shorts video. This stats we will cover in a different sheet later on. 36,000 36, impressions, so that's the amount of exposure of my different th thumbnails that are presented to current and new viewers. I got, like I said, 1,400 views and 34.34 watch time hours. One thing that I wanted to share also is that the thumbnails that I use are 
pretty simple. I do them myself. I'm not using AI. I'm not using any type of special software to generate them. This could be improved, but I'm a little afraid of using pictures from websites or other websites because I don't want to get blocked by YouTube. I have had channels before where I use pictures or logos or things like that before and I get issues of warnings by uh, YouTube but since I started doing my own different thumbnails it has stopped probably they could be you know a little more elaborate prettier more efficient I'm gonna work on that but I decided to keep it simple and do them myself to avoid any warnings from YouTube related to the channel. As I have already 600 subscribers, you don't want to get cancel or warnings because uh, of using an external source of data or picture or logo that would bring your channel down. So I'm, I'm being conservative in that aspect to protect the channel, maybe better, nicer, thumbnails would get me you know a lot more clicks and a lot more watch time but I decided to protect myself in that way this is something that people can um, use again I'm taking the time with this channel I've also looked at different uh, similar channels and all of them or most of them have a lot a lot of videos the ratio of subscribers to videos is quite high so you require a lot of videos to get a lot of subscribers so it's going to be a time thing and a perseverance thing I'm not planning on quitting on posting videos uh, I'm quite stubborn in the, the way that I am managing this uh, faceless channel oh yeah and that's also something that potentially is not helping me uh, I'm trying to do this faceless channel, get the stats out of the faceless channel. It's going to be a reference for uh, anyone who wants to start a faceless channel. I'm not doing, I'm not using voiceovers. I'm using my own voice, and because it's a faceless channel, it automatically has a little bit of less impact in YouTube. I have a career. I'm protecting that, so I'm trying to juggle my official career with my youtube journey and that was the best way for me to approach this channel faceless one with my voice and go from there eventually i could start showing my face eventually but not during the time that i'm active in my career that's what i decided to do many people probably are in that dilemma of what i should do sometimes it's compatible with your professional career sometimes it's not and I didn't want to take any chances so again this is my passion and that's why I would do it anyways faceless or not but I decided to do to take that route that maybe is a little longer in terms of YouTube but it didn't matter it didn't bother me at all as you can see you have over 300 videos and I'm keep going at a rate of two or three per week and I will continue um, for a long time I don't see myself stopping I'm not tired of it I'm still have fun and growing the community of people who are following me giving me comments giving me feedback it's helping me a lot and if in any way I can help a few individuals around the world get their investing journey or you know growth their, their knowledge towards uh, what we cover here in the channel that's amazing and if one day i get monetized from youtube and uh, i start getting a little bit of money out of the ads or things like that it's going to be a bonus i'll take that money and invest it probably show everybody what I, what type of returns i get out, out of that money that's what i plan on doing but uh, it's it's a long-term goal it's not the main focus right now for the channel so let's go over now um, a few trackers and charts that I have for the channel maybe this will interest you 
and that's how I'm uh, tracking the growth of the channel and see where I need to improve and where everything's going well. So I'll show you now three worksheets that I have in Excel. This is a yearly tracker of views, hours, and subscribers for the channel. So this is starting January 1st, 2024 until today. On the left side here, we have the view count, which started around 56,000, and now we are above 90,000, charging towards 100,000 views, which is a nice milestone for my channel. So that's going to be great. Eight months in, 1,000 views. We will see how this will perform in the 2025. Let's see how we get there. For the watch time hours here, started around 400, and now we are approaching 1400 watch time hours. I track it yearly because uh, from what I understood for the monetization, YouTube only tracks the watch time hours of a running year period. So it's not going, it's not from January 1st to the last day in December, if you're on, let's say today, let's say it's uh, 15 of August of 2024, well, the watch time hours between 15 of August of 2023 and 15 of August of 2024, that's the period that it looks like, it, it looks at, and you have to be above the thresholds to be able to keep your channel monetized. So if someone gets over the threshold and then stops uh, posting videos and their watch time slowly decelerates. If it becomes below that threshold, then they will lose the monetization at that time. So that's a way of YouTube to track that people are continually watching at least that level of hours in your channel to be able to receive some rewards related to ads shown in relation to your YouTube videos. And the subscribers, like I said, a little above 300 and now we are above 600 subscribers. It's a slow process. Your subscriber count may be linked to one performing or two, three performing videos. These numbers can explode very quickly with one single video. So you are one video away from increasing all your stats, views, watch time, and subscribers usually at any time without warning. So you have to keep grinding, keep trying to improve your channel and see if a different type of video or a specific video that uh, you selected to post will explode. You could completely change your channel as long as you keep you know your viewership or the type of viewer constant in your channel it will be a successful journey if you're trying to do all kinds of different videos then uh, it could be a little more difficult but if you stay within your lane normally you should be fine and sometimes an event will trigger a video that you may not even think that it would be very popular and that one explodes or is just a normal curve of growth and eventually your viewership grows a lot stronger just because you were constantly posting videos on YouTube. Can be a combination of those two different ways of growing your channel. That's what I've learned so far. As you see here, it doesn't seem to have any type of plateau either on views watch hours or um, subscribers since I started my YouTube channel. I never got a big region where I had a lot of drops in views, hours or subscribers. So it means that a lot more people are joining the channel. And if you look at it, 600 subscribers out of the millions and potentially billions of people who are watching different videos on YouTube, it's a very small amount. So you don't need tons of uh, people to watch your channel to have a very nice impact on your growth.
So I'll show this weekly or bi-weekly, depending on uh, how frequently I decide to do these videos, just to give you a cracking per perspective. And you can use this these type of tools also if you want to start your own channel. So this is week 63 in reality of uh, since the creation of the channel. So this week I got 1,800 views, 42.5 watch time hours, the average view duration is 1 minute 30. Keep in mind that my videos are generally between 4 and 10 minutes, something like that. I rarely go above 10 minutes. It's quite rare. Uh, well, week by week, I haven't tracked this actually uh, very, very tightly week by week. So we will see if we get an improvement in view duration. Uh, for a certain type of a, a video or if it's going to slowly creep up or if it's going to go down. So I'm going to track that a little more seriously now with this weekly or bi-weekly videos um, to see what stats move in the right direction and what stats move in the wrong direction. So the click-through rate is at 4.3%. Like you mentioned we got five subscribers this week and we got over 30,000 impressions of our video. And the last section here that I'm gonna show is um, the sources of viewership. So 84% is from browse. That's very important. If you want to grow in YouTube from the search that I have done, you want to have your videos mainly running on the browse section of YouTube to really explode. Search can contribute a little bit, but if you want to have evergreen and significant improvement in your stats of viewership, watch time, and subscribers, you need to be as high as possible in the browse section of YouTube. So for me, it's 84% and then 11.6% is on search. So I'm over 90% on those two uh, sections. Then the next one is other features. I don't know exactly what that entitle, entitles, 1.6%. Channel page, 1.1. That also is quite important. You need to have a appropriate banner and select you know, videos to be featured on your channel page that can uh, trigger viewership and subscribers. The more efficient you are in your channel page, the better stats you will get. So I have at least 1%, 1.1%. Other direct and indirect, uh, direct or unknown sources, 0.9%, and suggested videos, 0.8%. I have zero on the shorts feed and playlist. I recently changed a little bit. At the end of my videos, I started putting end cards for playlists to see if that will trigger a lot more view time. Sometimes you have to keep in mind that people watch YouTube on the background. Sometimes they're doing things in the house. So they put it in and if you put at the end of your videos link to playlist, once a playlist starts, you're going to have, you know, se sequential viewership of your videos. It's a good way to potentially have an increase in watch time for your channel. I'm trying it right now. I changed a few things on most of my videos or at least the ones that had a lot more views than normal to add at the end of the uh, video playlist and see if this could improve a little bit my stats. We'll see. It's a working process and, and that's what I have selected as the last, last change for my channel. Again, this covers a little bit my first weekly tracking of this channel. I hope you guys like these type of stats. Let me know what you want to see. Again, I have a little over a year of experience in YouTube. I have watched all kinds of videos on how to grow your channel, but I'm specific in my channel. It's in investing, it's in crypto, so it's very, very focus on that. So it's a very tight niche within the financial investment scene. So I'm trying to decipher 
what works and what doesn't, but the overall features of YouTube apply to my channel also, and I want to see how I can optimize them, if I can, to just be able to improve a little bit the stats of the channel so that I can be viewed or presented to more uh, individuals within YouTube that may be interested in my content. I hope it happens. We'll cover this, like I mentioned, weekly or bi-weekly. I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's going to depend on the response of these videos in the future. I will see how people respond to them and we will go from there. So put your comments in this video if you like the format, if you like the fact that I'm tracking these stats and sharing them to you guys. Like I said, many people believe that it takes a few weeks or even a few months to get monetized on YouTube. It's not a, a one type of recipe that applies to everyone, everybody. In my case, it's taking longer. It's linked to the efforts that I have put in the, in the channel. It's linked to my niche. It's linked to my type of videos, linked to my thumbnails, is linked to how I am delivering the content, the assets that I select to cover in the channel. There's a bunch of variables there that are very difficult to predict and tell you well. For you, it's gonna take uh, three months to get monetized. For you, it's going to take uh, three weeks. And for you, it's going to take five years. Looking at these type of videos from different creators, it's gonna give you an idea. If you want to start a YouTube channel, the first thing that I, and the last thing that I would say as um, the first step is that you need to select something that you know about, that you have a little experience with at least, and that you're passionate about. And that you can, without too much effort and too much time, generate different videos throughout a year, two years, three years, four years. You have to have a, a variable source of information to share to your viewers in order to be able to constantly add new content to the platform. If you select a niche that you can only generate 10 videos and after that you're out of ideas, then it's gonna make it, it extremely difficult for you to grow that channel over months and years and get that viewership that you want. So keep that in mind. That's the only thing that I will say in this first video as the best practice for starting a YouTube channel. I suggest that everybody does it. I think everything is moving online starting in 2024 and upwards. So a lot of content will be shared online. And if you're passionate about something and you wanna share it with as many pop people as you can, I would highly suggest that you select YouTube as your platform, your search engine, and if you can make a few bucks with it, well, that's a bonus, but do it for the fun of it and see what happens. Finally, I hope you got a little bit of information out of this video, and I hope that one person at least will really think about starting its YouTube channel. If you're hesitating, if you're thinking about it, just jump into the train, see how it is, and go from there. Learn as you go, and you will see that it is a fun journey to be involved in.